Hey everyone, today we'll be showing you how to print and cut using a silhouette cutter and our edible printer along with our edible supreme icing sheets. Using our edible printer and cutter bundle is a great way to print irregular shaped images and have them cut. So if you're tired of using the same old circles on your cookies or cupcakes, this tutorial is for you. The first thing you want to do is open Silhouette Studio on your computer. Here I'm using a Mac, but Silhouette Studio is also compatible with Windows. Once your software opens up, the very first thing you want to do is set up your page to fit your printer. So go ahead and click on File and Print Page Setup, and there you can choose the printer that you're using. Here um, it says any, any printer, but you want to go ahead and set it up to fit your printer. Um, I labeled mine edible printer so I'll click on that and below that you have paper size I'm using our supreme icing sheets and that's US letter so I'll keep it as US letter then you have orientation I'll go ahead and keep it portrait but you can also choose landscape and then click OK at the top right hand side of your window you have a very small sheet you want to click on that icon that icon is going to help you set up your page to your printer and to your cutter. So right there it says current printer and we already set it up in the file bar so you don't have to use that. And then you have paper size. We also set that as letter which is 8.5 by 11. If you have any different kind of sheet you can set it here or in the print page setup page from your menu bar. So we basically already set these up under the file menu bar. So the next thing you want to do is click on the top part where you have the registration mark option right there. So you click on that and that's to set up your registration marks. Now for icing sheets, especially supreme icing sheets, it's important that you set up your registration marks with a bit of space from the margins. This is due to the fact that our supreme icing sheets have an acetate border at the very bottom that makes it just a little bit smaller than eight and a half by 11. So right here on this little area you can click and select how big you want the space to be between the margins and you can see that move as you move the numbers. Now usually for supreme icing sheets we suggest that you use a margin of 0.625. That'll go ahead and allow your whole entire registration marks to be printed within the icing sheet instead of the acetate border at the bottom. You can either type in 0.625 or you can drag the little arrow until it gets to that margin point. You can always make the margins even smaller, but for now, if you want to use as much of your edible sheet as possible, you can keep it that way. Now go to library, and for the sake of this tutorial, I have already downloaded PNG images from the internet. It is very important for this step that you have transparent PNGs, as JPEGs won't work because they have a background. What you want to do is drag your files into your software and here I'm just going to download them into my patterns folder but you have many folders under your software you can use whichever ones you want. So now what you want to do is right click on your image and click merge and this will automatically insert the image onto your setup file. So you want to do this for every single image. Go ahead and merge them onto the file that you have open. Once you're done loading all your images onto your document, you can resize them to whatever size you want by clicking a corner and dragging. So here you can arrange as much as you want and as big as you want your images. You can also rotate them with the little green symbol at the top of your image. And just go ahead and click and drag them onto place and size them however you need them. I will size them here a little bit big in order to make them fit the whole entire page. And one really cool thing about Silhouette Studio is the fact that as you resize them you can see the actual size of them change within the margins of the image. So on the sides you can see how big the image is going to be. Also make sure that your image does not go over the red border as that is the cutting border. If your image goes outside of it your silhouette will not cut it. Once you have your all your images set up, you want to go ahead and go to the right hand corner again and click on the trace tool. This is what's going to allow you to set your cutting margins around the image. So you want to click on select trace area and then select an image 
and click and drag around it to create this square or rectangle. Now you can see the yellow highlighted area. That's what Silhouette is picking up as image. So the threshold is what will allow you to go ahead and highlight the whole entire image so that when you trace it, it'll create a trace around it. Now you want to click on Trace Outer Edge and this will create a trace around your image and you can see this as a red outline. This is what will cut around your image. Now one thing I like to do is to create an offset which will create a border around your image so that it will allow the silhouette to have a little bit of cutting space around your image. So after that, go down to the offset panel. You can find it right there. It's a little star icon and click on offset. Now you have to make sure that the outline that you created is selected. And as you can see, it created a margin. Now you can mess around with the margin space on this menu here. What I usually like to do is put it at 0 0.04. That allows for a nice amount of margin space while still making it look clean. Now this is what you want to do with every single image that you've uploaded. After you have your traced outline from the offset, you want to go ahead and delete the original outline that you created at the beginning. Because if not, the silhouette will cut both right next to the image and the outer margin. So you have to make sure that you delete that first trace. Now you want to go ahead and just do the rest. And like I said, the offset is completely optional. It's up to you. I personally like the offset because it allows for a nice clean margin around the image instead of being really, really close to the image. So like I said, repeat the same process for every single image that you have. If you had the same image and you just wanted to repeat it, then you could simply just copy it and paste it all around your document. But since we have different images, we want to go ahead and repeat this process for every single one of them. If you want to double check your cutting lines to make sure that they look right, all you have to do is click on send at the top right hand corner and you'll be able to see the highlighted red marks. So lastly, before printing, you want to make sure that you've set up your cutter to cut your icing sheet correctly. So here it says vinyl glossy, but what we want to do is just go ahead and click on cardstock, plain, because icing sheets are a little bit thicker like cardstock. And then here it suggests that your ratchet blade should be set to 3. It depends really on how much you've used your ratchet blade before cutting this and how dull it is. I use mine pretty much every day, so it's a little bit dull. So mine is set at 7 but you can set yours however you want. If it's brand new, I do suggest that you follow the instructions here and set it to three. Now you have speed and force. The speed, if you want it to go fast or slow, I usually set it to six because that seems to work best for icing sheets. And then you can do your force, which is how strong you want the cut to be. How much do you want the silhouette to press onto your sheet? Uh, usually for this, I set it in the 20s but like I said, it really does depend on how sharp your blade is. If it's brand new, set it less. If it's a little bit worn out, then set it more. So once you have your cutting set up, you can simply go to File, Print, and select the printer that you're going to print to. Again, I'm printing to my edible printer. Now this will go ahead and print on your icing sheet. Make sure that you feed your Supreme icing sheet through the rear tray instead of the main tray. Once all your print settings are correct, you can go ahead and click print. And once your icing sheet prints, make sure to let it dry for a little bit. That way it doesn't smear while it goes through the rollers of the silhouette. So once it's printed and dried, you can go ahead and load it onto your silhouette and click on the send button. My send button is invisible here since I don't have my silhouette hooked up. But once you do, you'll be able to see the button at the bottom. Again, thank you so much for watching and I hope this tutorial was helpful.